Well, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the next episode of Building This Reactor. Now, I know in the last episode we kind of left on a little melancholic note, but I tell you now, this episode is a lot better. So first of all, this bearing issue, we solved that with all thread. Now, this was actually a suggestion from some of you. Several of you actually suggested this kind of solution. Um, I don't exactly remember the names of the people who did, but you know who you are. Thank you very much because this actually ended up working bloody great. So you see all I did is I just put the bearing on there. I lined up the all thread and I welded it on. So I first wanted to just be safe. So not only did I just do one bearing, but I put two bearings on it to make sure it was straight and I welded only two at a time because I wanted to make sure, you know, before I weld all four, that everything lines up. So as you see, then after that, I had to do this long process of putting on these nuts. And oh my goodness, hey, it sucks nuts to put on them nuts. I was over here for like five minutes from just one side. I said, you guys luckily have the option of me speeding this up for you, but oh my goodness, you know, that got old pretty quick. But you know what, to me, I feel like it was worth it because these are gonna be adjustable forever, you know, like you can always adjust maybe one is a little bit further What one is a little down um, and all the type of stuff, you know, so I feel like this is a really good modular solution So I secured the welds I went ahead and I welded on the other two all threads So we had all four all threads to support this bearing Now that I knew everything lined up after that I cut down these all thread rods because I don't want to be spinning for five minutes. Let me spin for 2.5 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, improvements are improvements. So at that point, I wanted to make sure that I can take it off and put it on because that's the most important part for this. I need to be able to remove it and be able to put it back on. And as you can see, I could do that. Excellent. And after that, it really was a matter of, okay, so since I can remove it, can I put it back on? Can this shaft spin? But I need a little handle for that because you know, leverage the laws of Newton, right? So anyways, I got this little hub here, the sprocket hub they make for go-karts, and I'm gonna make a, a little handle mount out of this, pretty much a flange, which is gonna have a pipe welded to it. So you see, I just cut out a plate, I mark the dots, and then uh, after that, we drill it out with the drill press, all four of those holes there. And then I can go ahead and line this sprocket up with that. Put the, the screws in. And I'm going to go ahead and weld this rod in here. Now this is going to be an NPT uh, half inch diameter rod. And I'm doing that because then I can always adjust it. I can make it longer. I can, you know, um, keep it shorter. Or I, I can add whatever attachment I want on the other end. And I just ended up tacking it to there for now in a way. Like kind of like a secure tack. Just because I wasn't sure. Um, if I wanted to move this rod later on or something or if I need to cut it off but anyways got it on there And let's see how it works. It does spin. That was so exciting to see and look from this side, baby There we go. <laughs> we got them blades spinning. Yeah, I mean come on now like this was so exciting to see because from last episode like that, this was just what all I wanted at the end of the day. I just want these blades spinning in there. That's the whole function of this reactor. That's the number one thing that makes this reactor different. And it's like, we had to get that done. So I was quite excited. And at that point, you know, since I knew I didn't need the plasma torch anymore or anything, it was time to move this to my house, my backyard, um, and finish it over there because, you know, my work productivity goes up like 300% when I could be listening to my own music when I'm doing my work. So I have these little uh, brackets from a shelf here that I want to make the legs out of. Now they have these rivets on them. I know what you're thinking. Yo, Jab, Jab, why are you using these? Why don't you use some new angle line? Well, first of all, I already had these laying around, so that's free. And second of all, I'm on a limited budget and they're free. So I'm going to use whatever I can use to make this work, okay? Because um, especially for something like the legs, like as long as it holds it up, like that's all that we really need at the end of the day. So I went ahead, ground up all those rivets, and I welded it all together. Now, you guys have the convenience of me cutting out like, like half the footage, but almost everything that you guys see in this video has taken me like all day to do. Like, so this video like has been shot over like five days because like even lining up the legs alone and making sure they were all square and even and the same height and level, like that that took me hours. But 
because I'm really taking my time, you know? That's the thing, another thing about me being home, like I really can take my time on stuff because I don't feel like, oh, I gotta do this before, before, um, before the shop closes, you know what I'm saying? But when I'm at home, you know, I really can be out here in, from, from dusk till dawn up in here, you know? So, anyways, I went ahead, I welded all that good stuff on there. I welded some crossbars too, because it was a little shaky, a little wobbly, wobbly, you know? Um, and we don't want that because especially when we have giant blades spinning in there like it's Naruto or something like come on we definitely got to make sure this thing is supported. I also was thinking maybe long term maybe I want to put some little wheels on this thing at the base so that way it's easier to move. But anyways as you can see it looks pretty good. Um, I made sure them things were the same you know so it, it looks really good in my opinion and that's where we're going to go on to the next step which actually the next step will be making sure that now that we have this um, up elevated, we got to make sure that these blades and the, the auger still, you know, can go in well and it can support the weights and support it spinning. Because like, like I said before, that's the whole function of this reactor, you know, if, if so, if that doesn't work, then there's no point in anything else in this reactor. So we go ahead, push the auger through. It does line up still. That's great. Got to make sure the bearing still lines up. It was giving me a little bit more trouble to line it up. You can see one of those all thread rods is like off, but you know, honestly, if it still goes on, that's all I care about. I'm not trying to be perfect with this reactor. I'm just trying to make it work, you know? And, and to everybody asking, you know, a lot of people do ask me, um, like, get, can, can, can we get measurements? You know, can we um, get all this stuff? And I'm, I'm like, well, this right now is just like my first time doing this. I don't even know if this one is gonna work, guys. Like. It's, it's, it's a, a hypothesis that this is even going to work. So so for this one, I'm not sharing all that information, the measurements and all. I'm really just, like, we're on a journey together, guys. Like, everything you're seeing here, I'm doing for the first time. Doing, okay, maybe not the first time, but, you know, like, you, you get the point I'm trying to say, right? Like, we don't know, but once I can confirm that this one works and this design is great and all that type of stuff, I'm gonna make a tutorial, a really, really in-depth good tutorial. I'm gonna write books, all the type of stuff like, you know, so don't worry about that. It's just that right now, I don't wanna leave anybody astray and tell you, yo, build this reactor. I don't even know if it works and then it maybe ends up being like the worst one or something. I doubt that's the case, but yeah. Anyway, let me start talking. As you can see, um, I need to go ahead and weld this pipe on here because this pipe is gonna be the feed ports. So, that being said, mark it, go ahead, cut it out. And, after it's cut out, line it up on there. And you know, you guys, you do notice the same thing I noticed, there's a huge gap, a huge gap, you know what I'm saying? Like, like a donkey's teeth up in there. And honestly, I just had to work with it. And I just want to, I'm saying this to let you guys know, it is completely possible to weld huge gaps, even on thin metal like this, okay? I use spray arc, uh, 0 .35, 035 wire, and if you just, as long as you concentrate your heat on the thickest metal, so I concentrated all my heat on the, the thick pipe, you can do it, guys. I don't care what anybody says. You can do it, you can make a good weld. So after that, we got the pipe on there, now it's time to design these waveguides, okay? So to anybody new, the waveguide is almost like a barrel for the microwaves to travel down because this thing will be heated through microwaves, the plastic we put in there. So with that being said, I had I got this little piece of sheet metal, but went ahead grinding all that rust off. Just, you know, we gotta make it look pretty as pretty as possible, you know? So after that, I, I started to cut out all this stuff and I, I started with the circular saw and steel saw, but it was too thick. Like the cuts were all like too thick. So I need to use a jigsaw. And once again, guys, I'm telling you, it looks like I did this in like two minutes. It took me literally a whole day to do all this, but I got all these nice pieces of metal cut out, all these little shimmy shimmies. And let me explain to you guys these magnetrons. So you can see there's two different types of magnetrons. They're really the same, but they have a different mounting system. So one mounting system extends out wider than the other. Um, this magnetron on my left has the wider one. The right magnetron has a shorter ma uh, mounting system. We want our mounting system to be universal, meaning it can fit both ones. So we gotta drill a total of four holes that match both of them, as well as the actual hole for that little, um, the main part of the magnetron to go in. It all makes sense in a second, you know, later on. But anyways, that's what I did with some of that metal 
the, the parts that needed holes, I went ahead and I did that. And now we're gonna weld the actual waveguide together. Now this is something that I do have experience with because every single microwave reactor I've built, I have had to design waveguides. So I've done this many, many times. And um, the number one thing to me is, you know, my metal never fits up perfectly, but as long as you get it 90 degrees, um, a consistent height and consistent width every time, you know, all these little other imperfections, you can just cover up with your weld, um, honestly, and then you grind it down and then you just do that over and over again. And you, you know, I do airtight welds on this because we want this airtight. We don't want anything leaking. So that's why I do grind down my welds to make sure there's no holes or pinholes or porosity and all those type of holes. We don't want any of those holes in here. So anyways, we got the first waveguide done and this waveguide is going to be the one that gets welded into there almost like a weld on flange just gonna get welded into the reactor itself so i want to i went ahead and i cut out a little square uh with my uh, my angle grinder and once that was done pretty much it's just a matter of you see um lining this thing up now i did want to show you guys this because it was really cool when i cut out that square we can see the blades in there spinning you know from a side view and this reminds me i actually want to build a little side window in here like like kind of, it's gonna look like this waveguide flange almost, but yeah, I, I want to build a window because I'll be so cool like for footage and stuff to like see stuff as it breaks down. But anyway, I line this up, I go ahead and weld it on there, you know, um, and this is pretty much the same as welding all this other stuff on the thin metal. I will say this, it does take some skill to weld this thin metal, especially when there's gaps. It does take some skill, I'll be honest. So next, I need to weld the next waveguide. Um, and this is going to be the waveguide where the magnetron is mounted. So there is a difference. Like the first waveguide was more of a mount. This is more of like the actual waveguide where the, the magnetron, the thing that produces microwaves will be mounted and they'll shoot down in here and it will cause it to funnel where it needs to go. So you can see that's why we have that hole at the top because that's where the magnetron will, will mount in. So anyways, with that being said, it was really the same process as the other one. Um, but this one is closed at the back. Um, and of course this type of stuff I will leave measurements for when I really um, you know do this stuff for real So as we see I have it done and I wanted to make sure that all these holes lined up Which they did because you see how that works this, this one's gonna mount onto the one that we welded onto the reactor And I want to show you guys we have the magnetron here and as you see that little, I don't even know what you want to call it, the antenna slides into that hole. That's where the microwaves shoot out and then boom, they come out here. So at that point, all I had to do was really just make sure that it lined up, make sure it fit on there as you see it did. And at that point, I mean, we pretty much were done with the wave guy. Like I said, it took me like almost two days to get to this point, but you know, we have the footage to make it down to two minutes. So at this point, uh as you see everything lines up really well and i was like man i want to just give this thing a little test run now just see how it works the microwaves go in there you know are they gonna arc off of the auger blades because those auger blades are really imperfect or we gonna have tons of issues so i said screw it let's go turn it on and and just watch and learn guys oh yeah i did put a little bit of plastic in here by the way yo that's right we got the yo the plastic is breaking down in there guys and guess what i turn these blades and i mean it's still working like it's not arcing it's not causing all types of problems the microwaves are going in there and breaking down the plastic and this is just with one magnetron we're gonna have six of these guys on we're gonna have six of these holes on there six anyways you guys take care Leave your suggestions. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out.